Welcome back to this course on using Git for version control. Alright, so far we have seen how uh, multiple people can work on the same repository and we have used GitHub as a remote repository, as a centralized place for hosting the code and for all the collaborators to pull and push uh, source code to the project. Um, Alright, so this is a uh, um, workflow which we demonstrated in the last video but in particular remember that in the last video the main repository owner which um, in this case i am simulating by working on uh, my desktop folder planets uh, the main repository old owner uh, the original owner of the repository worked uh, off um, on the on a different file uh, mars.txt right original owner contributed some text to mars the file mars whereas the collaborator was working on a different file and this is my collaborator directory that i'm simulating here and the collaborator was working on this planets uh, directory in the home drive um, uh, as a simulation um, that's what i'm doing um, so the collaborator is working on a different file called pluto.txt okay so they're working on two different projects okay and and two different sub aspects of the bigger project now sometimes uh, this clean separation may not be always possible at some point uh, in the future uh, the two uh, collaborators will have to probably work on the same file okay so let's look at how that scenario um, plays out when you use git um, for version control okay um, this video is based upon lecture number nine or lesson number nine uh, which talks about conflicts and why we talk about conflicts the conflicts can arise when you're working in the same section uh, of the same uh, project that you or same file if you're working on the same section but before we deal that let me just show you how we can do a single file um, different areas of a single file and how git is smart about handling the differences even though the changes have been made to a single file and how git handles uh, this uh, before we delve deep into the uh, idea of conflicts okay so let me um, as the original author of the repository as the original creator of the repository i continue to edit mars.txt okay now uh, just for the um, sake of this demonstration i'm going to show um, by editing the second line um, so original repository owner edits um, the second line or adds some changes or adds some content to the second line okay let's just say we have done this okay and now i write this out and exit so that's the original repository owner now we know this uh, standard way of adding and committing the changes to the project so added some um, text to the second line of mars.txt uh, pushed um, or other text below okay let's say the original repository owner does this and pushes it to the remote all right so this is the remote view of the original repository owner so far there have been six commits but if i refresh this you can see that there have been now seven commits and that's the commit that's been made okay so a new line has been added and everything else was pushed uh, below that line all right now the new repository owner or the new collaborator who works on this project the newly added collaborator may not be always aware about um, this change that has been pushed now it is a recommended um, it is a very recommended thing in the world of git that you should pull more often so before uh, you make massive changes to your project you should try to be always in synchronism with what all other people in the project have done so you we have to pull often so we have to pull from the remote repository often this is a recommended best practice however this may always not be possible right 
uh, you may be working on the um, on a train with no internet connection on a plane on the way to a conference this can happen so there, you may not be always connected to the internet but with git you can always work locally and make some local commits and this is absolutely possible and then when you get a chance to sync to the internet you can uh, try to push it okay so uh, but it is always recommended the recommended procedure is pull more often now there is no guidelines on how often you have to pull it depends on the activity in your project on the average span between activities and we do not need to get super um, meticulous about this but uh, or super particular or picky about this but it's a good idea to keep pulling the latest changes from the remote repository uh, every once in a while uh, or as frequently as possible if it disturbs your flow of thought when you're editing a file do not do it but otherwise uh, it's a recommended practice okay so with that said let's assume that uh, this newly added collaborator does not have access to the internet currently and um, they are working on their um, file but let's uh, but instead of working on Ma uh, Pluto which they, which they did in the last video let's say they decide to work on Mars.txt okay so they uh, this newly added collaborator is now working on Mars.txt and he uh, or she decides to add a new line to the bottom of the uh, file so add okay so um, the newly added collaborator uh, has made this addition to the bottom of mars.txt file so the newly added collaborator decided that now is the time for them to make some changes to mars.txt so before they got on the plane they made all they made this pull from the git repository they got all the latest possible changes okay and let's say they worked on this specific um, portion of the code okay or, or of their project and they save it okay so this is the newly added collaborator and they make local commits and that's absolutely possible so you add mars.txt the project and you make a commit saying mm, okay uh, newly added collaborator makes an addition in the last line of mars.txt okay right now in a normal circumstances when this person the newly added collaborator when this person was working on pluto.txt he did the same workflow he he or she made the same workflow right so they were working on the pluto.txt they made some changes to it they made a commit and they pushed it so let's see if we try that what happens okay remember that the original uh, repository owner had already pushed some changes to this same file so if the newly added collaborator also makes this tries to make a push then git is going to say ha huh, i cannot do this action it fails to push some references in fact it cannot push at all this is like a standard error message it says updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally and it helpfully says this is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same reference so there is another local repository sitting somewhere else in the world in this case the original um, creator of this repository um, and he says that this another repository has pushed to the same remote so you will want to first integrate these remote changes and it helpfully offers a hint use git pull before trying to push again right and um, you could also go for more help on this but let's try uh, following the advice given by this warning message okay so i'm going to clear the screen for now and try git pull so let me try to pull from the remote repository and in this particular case it is able to successfully pull from the remote repository and it tries to merge all the changes in the local file so in this particular case uh, and the commit message is pre-populated with this message which says merge branch master from this remote repository url okay that is already a very helpful thing and now you could add uh, or you could change this commit message suitably right you could um, also say i have a let me see how 
you could comment out the original message or you could decide that uh, I will keep the original message um, and just add more details to it so original so newly added uh, collaborator had made some changes to the last line of Mars text and you can say this is a, a merge commit so merge commit is a specific form of comment uh, and some help is pre-populated here it says please enter commit message to explain why this merge is necessary so uh, that's what i'm doing so the newly added collaborator um, had made some changes to the last line of uh, merge master text now this is a merge commit uh, probably some other change uh, or in this particular case you can call it a non-conflicting change git was really smart about it so git could detect that these changes do not conflict with each other okay so probably made some other non-conflict probably another collaborator or in this particular case since we have only two we can say original repo creator had um, made some other non-conflicting um, change uh, before my latest change and push to github maybe now you don't typically need to do this level of explanation this is not probably not all required but that is what has happened and we are just describing that you may want to format your commit message slightly better um, for the time being i'm not going to bother with that um, and i am going to um, maybe just write and quit and it says ah merge has now been made by the recursive strategy now this git is pretty smart it has an algorithm for detecting um, conflicts and in this particular case it determined that there has been no conflicts and it is able to do a successful merge all right so uh, let's see um, mars.text and you can see that the original repository owner's contribution to line number two and the newly added con collaborators repository to the bottom of the text are both available now okay so this um, is how a non-conflicting merge would work and this is a nice scenario uh, now let's go back to the original repository owner and they now decide to pull they'll get the same uh, let me see what is oh they okay now i think we have only the newly uh, added collaborator has now able to be has now merged all the changes from the remote they still haven't pushed it back remember the push was rejected so they asked to do the merge first so we have now done the merge and the merge commit was made locally with that particular commit message the long commit message now the newly added collaborator can now push and this time the push should be successful so we'll wait for that yes and now the push is successful so you can go to the remote repository and you can see that the last line change has been made and that shows up as an individual commit and the merge also shows up as a commit and in this particular case there has been no conflict and there are therefore two new commits which the original repository owner can now just pull from the remote so this is a nice workflow where there are no where two people or more people are not editing the same area of text okay so now let me just say um, that the newly added collaborator well they are working on the last line of master text aren't they so they were working on the last line so we continue to work on the last line so let me move to the bottom of this file and uh, newly added collaborator continues to work on the bottom of 
okay so the newly added collaborator let's say he is not an expert on mars but he still has some idea about mars and he is making or he or she are making their um, edits with their limited expertise to mars so let's just say that's the scenario so they write this file um, and then they say add mars.txt and then they make a local commit um, new collaborator continues to work on um, bottom of mars.txt with limited knowledge let's just say one of them is not an expert in this field but they still want to contribute and they have done their bit um, and then they push okay now the local uh, the original owner apparently is an expert in the file mars which is why they were working on mars okay so uh, let's just say um, they are also working on the same line in this case the bottom line but without pulling so they haven't yet pulled they have been busy working on this file master text because that's what they started that's what they're continuing okay so original repo owner um, um, makes important uh, edits this could be anything um, here but I'm just simulating with some example so he says uh, the, uh, the original repository owner has made some important edits to the bottom of marsh.txt okay so let's uh, write that file out and quit and the original repository owner hasn't tried to pull clearly they have to make this commits um, because that is uh, if you do not make these commits and try to pull from the remote the remote will try to overwrite the local version and that's not what we are trying to say we are trying to say these changes have to be recorded somewhere and if you do not commit these changes will not get recorded anywhere so it's important to make local commits before you go and pull so pulling uh, frequently from the remotes is absolutely vital but local commits have to be created so, so that we have track points, uh, points to refer back to and decide which one to use. So that's what we're going to do. So clearly there is some conflict here, but this original repository owner is not yet aware of this conflict. They are trying to get their commit in their local repository first. That's very important that you do that before you put, okay. With that, um, let me say added uh, original repo owner added uh, important stuff to bottom of mars.txt all right now they try to push the original repo owner try to tries to push and clearly the push operation will not work and that is because there has been some um, already some changes which were already pushed on to this um, repository in the remote so they have to pull so the, the original repo owner does not know what the collaborator has done so they will try to do a pull straight away but in this particular case this pull will not be successful so it says that there is a conflict now we come to this topic of this video merge conflict both of them try to work on the last line of master text and git cannot figure out who is more important git cannot assign priorities or git is not a biased software let's say it that way so it cannot assign priorities it cannot decide for itself who or which edit needs to be done first so it says automatic merge conflict failed and fix the conflicts and then commit the resulting file okay so we have to manually edit the conflicting file and it will tell you that there has been a conflict in this particular file master text so we edit that file which has conflicts and now you can see some special markers now the special markers if you are already familiar with unix diff um, diffs and patches then these special markers uh, will be 
not a surprise otherwise it takes a little bit of a uh, explanation uh, of this so what the left arrow key says what comes from the local place or the head of the current repository in your local repository so in this particular case the head comes from uh, what the last change has been made everything else was fine so all these things were not marked up so you have to only be interested in the content between the left arrow keys and the left uh, um, yeah the left arrow um, left angle brackets and the right angle brackets so you have to be only interested in the content in these last four or five lines everything else was successful clearly nobody else worked on it so there was no problem on it and the problem comes in between these lines okay and the left uh, parenthesis or the left uh, angle brackets has uh, a meaning it says what points to the latest change in your local directory and in this particular case uh, the equal to there is uh, you, you may ignore that and then the this one just about the that says what happens from the newly added collaborator and this says from where that commit it identifies the commit sha uh, of the remote so this points to the remote and this points to the local now it is up to the mm, human to make this um, res resolution now they can go through emails or there might be other sophisticated mechanisms to resolve this conflict um, they can discuss in an online platform like slack uh, by 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 uh, collaborating this by by working on this patch file or this diff file and and figure out among themselves come to an agreement among themselves who um, or whose edit needs to be on that particular place okay now once that has been done let's just say the newly added collaborator understands that the original author is an expert in mars and they were just trying to help um, they give up on their commit so the newly the original collaborator decides that this is not worth uh, having anymore and they try to get rid of all of that stuff so all these marker stuff needs to be um, this is just a manual aid uh, in understanding how I messed it out okay so let me it's just a manual aid it's a aid for the human and not for and not to be part of the repository it's just uh, to aid the human it's just a visual aid for the human okay so now we just decide that the original repos um, original repo owners contribution is much more important uh, we decide that and then we save that file with all the clean changes have been now saved and now I can uh, the original repository owner can add and commit and this time the commit message has to be very explicitly clear manual uh, conflict resolution to the last line of um, master text so make an annotation in the commit message saying that there was a, a merge conflict and it has been resolved manually this is this can happen all the time i think at this point they should be ready to push and github should be able to accept all these changes and git should be able to successfully push let's go back uh, into the remote repository uh, into the other collaborators uh, perspective and try to pull and they should be able to get all these changes into their local repository straight away so that is how you would resolve a merge conflict and if I clear the screen and ask for git log, give me one line log, you may see that uh, the manual conflict is indeed the last thing that was pulled from the GitHub repository. So this is a typical workflow in Git. So most of the time, if you're working on different uh, aspects of the project, there will be git is smart enough to understand that there are different portions they're working on and it tries its best to merge the conflicts uh, or there will not be any conflicts that need to be handled but if multiple people are working on the same area of the project then git detects that it cannot assign priorities and it gives up and places helpful markers for the human to make a resolution here all right so i think with that uh, we have come to the end of this video series 
there are there is more material uh, available on the software carpentries website um, so let's go a level up to the git novice homepage, and you can see that we have come uh, and covered up to lesson number nine um, lesson number 10 through 14 is a bit more um, broader background about how we can do open science and what kind of licensing um, arrangements are possible what kind of licenses can be attached to your source code when you're sharing it to others on the web what kind of attribution you can get from those licenses it talks about document licenses versus source code licenses it also tells you a little bit of how to cite other people's code and and gives a brief overview of hosting and um, the last chapter is specifically tailored towards people working in the R environment using R studio uh, graphical user interface uh, but I think the main core courses uh, the core ideas of git have already been covered um, thank you for your um, attention and thank you for going through the course with me uh, once again my name is Krishna Kumar Gopalakrishnan I work in the mechanical engineering department I just finished my PhD here um, and you can ask me any questions by emailing me at uh, krishnakumar at imperial.ac.uk um, uh, my contact information is right here um, if you didn't catch that initially uh, once again thank you for um, coming uh, and listening to this course uh, with me hope you uh, understood the ideas and are able to use these ideas in your uh, in your own projects effectively thank you once again bye